for our last and our last guest, our last speaker of the evening. Um, we have a wonderful painter, um, but he doesn't prefer to describe himself as a landscape painter, even though um, his work does discuss the landscape. It is his interpretation of space and the way in which he comes to it that determines this practice. He involves the digital medium as an inspiration for the representation of the natural. His paintings are explorations that poetically expose our own idea of the landscape. Please welcome Stefan Peters. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, This is actually the end of my presentation. <laughs> Just uh, to inform you about an exhibition which is which started uh, last week. And in this context, I wanted to announce this. Uh, but uh, yeah. Okay, here we are. This is me and my studio in 2014. Um, and as you can see, there's a few round paintings. Uh, it's actually the Google Earth series, a uh, series of paintings where I use uh, the data of Google Earth. Uh, so photographical uh, registrations uh, of uh, Google Earth. And that's actually the starting point um, of this series of paintings, but I'm not painting them uh, in a way that they just like copies of, of the photographs, but just at the starting point uh, to experiment with the paint on the canvas. So the round form is uh, more like a reference to um, the like the um, the romanticism and also the way of looking to uh, through a spyglass and, and looking at the world and seeing it as a some kind of scale model. So the, the landscapes are presented not really as landscapes, but more as scale models or theater sets. And uh, you can, it's not always that explicit, but if you look carefully, you see sometimes these shadows casted on the background. So uh, you see it's uh, not real landscape. So uh, or sometimes it's also use of uh, artificial light so it's more like a botanical representation of a landscape. And always um, look up these landscapes uh, which are not really um, influenced by human. So I kind of try to keep the timeless aspects uh, in it. That you just see nature and it can be in any specific time. Uh, the Diaphanous series is um, another series which immediately followed, uh, and um, I still, keep yeah, I kept the round form just to be able to um, to organize the image because it's painted on transparent film. It's different kinds of layers uh, put next to uh, behind each other, but from a um, certain space in between that you get in some kind of trompe l'oeil. There's also these shadows casted, but now it's uh, literally happening. Um, and this round form gives me the possibility to still turn and switch layers even after the painting process. So that's uh, also one of the things that um, uh, fascinate me, that a painted image is still possible to influence after the painting process. And the backdrop series uh, is a series of paintings where I use uh, green paint, but it's more like a reference to the green screen uh, used in broadcasting and, and uh, filling up a background after uh, yeah, replacing the, the color green or, for instance, blue as well. 
um, but these um, paintings are um, generally painted with green tints of uh, yeah, colors, uh, colors of green tints but also as you look carefully in detail there's yellow blue there's more colors present uh, and the idea was actually to uh, do this ma make this reference with um, a green screen and the next step I wanted to make is uh, to apply it really into video so I made um, like f the detailed photographs of the painting and use these photographs in a digital program so I scanned them in high resolution and uh, I applied them in a video program where I animated them so the idea as it within the diaphan series where these layers were separated uh, I kind of put these images also behind each other from a certain space in between and then applied the keying filter it's a more like um, uh, keying out certain colors of green so they become transparent and you can look through that, that certain uh, photograph in certain parts so you get transparency in all the layers and it creates some kind of depth because in the diaphan series I'm, I'm going back a little bit um, yeah there's also the the aspect of the painting process which is still visible in the uh, final image which uh, intrigues me as well that um, yeah, the process is still visible, and that's that's something I elaborated in the in the video. Uh, um, yeah, I, I don't know if you can show it now. So what you actually see is the different kinds of layers uh, behind each other and certain colors are just taken away or become they become transparent. So you have various layers behind each other and it creates a, a certain idea of depth but it's um, yeah each layer is still flat and by means of digital cameras in the program yeah, I kind of animated them and, and going through the layers. It's a bit of you know, the idea of uh, entering, really like entering a painting and, and go into the, the history of, of the, the painting process. Slice series is a, another series where I um, literally slide the painted image, so I cut them in pieces. Mostly it's uh, vertical, like lamelles, and um, I kind of rearrange them. Uh, it's a bit like uh, how a digital image can be mirrored, uh, just by 
replacing or the, the or change the order of the lamelles, um, yeah, you can influence the image after the painting process. In this case, the first one becomes the last one. So it's really mirroring an image. And that's how, how a digital image is mirrored in the same way. Yeah. And I like to experiment with that just, just to see what happens and how it can in, um, affect the painted image and yeah, what kind of uh, atmosphere it, it creates, what relations it makes in the history of painting and what becomes visible, uh, like um, the brush strokes, how they, how they kind of change and it, it has this kind of futuristic look. Yeah, this is another version actually. The, here the lamels are put um, in another way, so it becomes more spatial. And that's actually a way to make the step to sculpture. So in this case, I had to kind of um, search for possibilities to create a work outside, uh, work in different materials. But also, yeah, this this is uh, something how how painting can um, yeah, what what it can mean in in a space as a sculpture. So I'm I'm constantly looking for the these um, boundaries and and possibilities of what, what painting can mean and, and how how it can be influenced and what it and how it uh, influences our, our way of um, experiencing the image. Yeah, this is something I wanted to talk about too. It's not really about landscape, but it's a collaboration with a fashion designer, a Korean fashion designer. And she is, each year she is um, working with an artist and, and using material of, of the artist, like the uh, imagery or, yeah, more getting into the, the world of the artist and translating it um, into her context. And that's really interesting that uh, for me to um, make this translation as well, to think in terms of what this person is thinking and, and uh, in, in, in by means like uh, what, what can uh, brush stroke, what, 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 what does color mean when you wear it, what, what's, uh, what does it look like, how can it be translated into uh, fabric and uh, yeah, of course you have to make compromises to um to each other and and make decisions uh, for having yeah like a, a result which is for both parties satisfying The Chronicle series is a series which is still running, <coughs> and I like this series very much because it's um, yeah it's about landscape painting, but it's not really landscape. So I just paint, and these images they they just appear because of the paint how it's applied, and by choosing colors yeah, and in the context to each other. Because this is a series where I really make and yeah, it's small panels and I make so many uh, and they're all imaginary landscapes so I have a, s a certain landscape in my mind and I rip yeah rip, um, it's a constant uh, repetition of, of painting that certain landscapes but th but it evolves and as you can see here um, I'm organizing 
all these images because sometimes yeah they don't follow up each other in in the way I organize them here sometimes yeah it's just very intuitive how I paint them but afterwards by arranging them I can kind of present it in a chronological way that it uh, yeah, relates to video and video frames and which makes it more yeah interesting in a way that it's yeah related to film and memory and in this case it's um i make a grid and each um, part of the grid i fill in with a kind of painting practice so it's really uh, very intuitive the colors they they change just uh, like in an organic way and it's then very randomly painted so yeah just uh, one brush stroke can become a mountain or can be a tree mostly if i use blue it's uh, probably water or sky but it's uh, to me it's always surprising what what the outcome is um, and that's that's what really fascinates me and, and drives me to to make this series um, I don't know if it has to do so much with um, with landscape itself but maybe the memory of landscape um, and and how we take yeah like we gather all these images of, of memories and we keep them in our cell phones but yeah it's it's nice to generate them yourself by painting them and and trigger someone else's memory because sometimes I have people and they see these paintings and they say oh, okay I know that image I was there on vacation last year it's uh, it's crazy they recognize the images I painted just out of my mind and by coincidence actually And just by context, but because sometimes you see images, and if you would isolate them, they're kind of abstract. But in the context, they become landscapes, and you look at them in a different way. Then, and yeah, there's this comparison. You you get invited by comparing landscapes, and and it kind of triggers, um, yeah, M maybe the way you look at landscape and how you memori memorize it, or yeah, maybe the link to seeing images from artworks or I don't know. Yeah, and it's always painted on wooden panel because the the um, texture of a um, canvas is not really interesting. I, I try to keep it as pure as possible just by using uh, these brush strokes. They have so many so much detail in it that uh, yeah it. If you look to it through a spyglass, it's still very, very sharp, and surprisingly, yeah, sometimes it's how the the paint dries up, it's it's always a surprise. Uh, you don't really control it if if you paint it. And I like to, that balance of kind of controlling the paint and and leave it over to coincidence. Now I painted many, in various sizes. But yeah, each each. Um, Painting is a kind of a journey where I go into and what I leave afterwards. And when I look at the painting when it's finished, for instance, this big one, yeah, I don't remember anymore painting these these images, these uh, landscapes. And that's yeah, uh, it's a bit strange, but yeah, maybe I don't know what the reason is. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, the screen. It um artwork so I was asked to uh, create a site specific work for the triennale uh, at this location the Coda campus um yeah it's always a challenge to create something for yeah for a site specific thing um and the idea was there quite early to work with flags because uh, in this context of all these companies which are present there, uh, it's uh, yeah, maybe an, a logical or uh, yeah, a step which is quite obvious to, to work with. May maybe, yeah, like uh, 
So we started with this idea of also this landscape, but the history of a landscape. So I painted like black and white um, images, very suggestive um, paintings that are actually abstract, but they, they are landscapes too. And setting these next to these gradients, like they, with, um, with this combination, yeah, you get a, a, a different landscape. But presenting them like that, uh, I thought it would be interesting to kind of separate them and create this contrast of the memory of a landscape and the color, the filter we put on the landscape, uh, or the context in a way. Another work is uh, also a site-specific work. It's a work. It's um, for a parallel event uh, of the Stadsrenal at Smart Lab, uh, also in Hasselt. And I was asked to create an art piece for a specific space. It's actually like a basement and a living room, which are which became one space. And it's four by four meters, and I think almost like six meters high. Um, and I was asked to, to create for that specific space uh, a piece, which is also related to the, the piece I made uh, at the Corda Campus. And I thought, yeah, it would be interesting because the piece is not really, there's not really an opening when the, the, um, the exhibition starts. Um, but it's, there's always a live stream of the, the piece which is present in the space. And I, yeah, for me it was interesting to kind of translate it, uh, that I would kind of create an, uh, some kind of glitch in like a interruptment or like, um, yeah, interrupting image. Uh, via the, the webcam. So this is actually um, how it looks at night. So what you see is not uh, really that visible, but it's also these lamelles which are hung up on the ceiling and they just move because of the, the air inside the space. And it's very subtle, but yeah, you have these reflections and um, Images because some lamelles are painted, some uh, are have this these uh, gradients as well, and this combination of those two and then also mirrors and opaque white ones. Yeah, there's reflection, there's transparency, there's images appearing and disappearing, and and combining of colors, which is uh, creates an, a, a disturbing image and especially through the cameras as well. There's actually a view to the ceiling. Yeah, I'm gonna try to start the live stream. Um, I don't know if uh, you guys do it or, or not. I think I have to. Maybe the website is already open. Ah, okay, here it is. It's not really a live stream, I think. Uh, ah, okay. Okay, that's much better. It's more convincing, huh? <laughs> That's uh, yeah, kind of an overview of my recent work. So you see there's a lot of influence by the digital. Uh, of course, it's um, because of my background as a graphic designer. But yeah, I like to put 
these two things like graphic design and and the digital next to painting which is very analog and uh yeah intuitive next to each other and and see what comes out of it it's just by combining them or putting them and and see it as a duality yeah that's it thank you Thank you very much, Stefan. Are there any questions from the audience? No? I have a quick question. Um, do your paintings dominate your image of the landscape, or how real is your idea of a landscape? Um, yeah, it's because most landscapes I paint are imaginary. Um, I think it's more about the memory of that landscape. And there's not a specific landscape, it's, of course, digitally influenced by uh, seeing images online and you kind of recognize them but th I think they, they mingle it's just um, mm. by the experience of a landscape but also the memory of a landscape and in, in many ways we or now these last few years we see a landscape before we actually experience it just by seeing it online mm. so um, it's beautiful that that yeah. happens with your, your audience that they mm. recognize and they see the landscape inside your paintings mm -hmm. yeah, before yeah. they and they think they experienced it before yeah yeah but uh -huh. it just yeah beautiful thank mm -hmm. you stefan thank you Rita. let's test okay sorry <laughs> yes hello um yeah i was drawing something quick the landscape who would remember the humans but i think enough yeah the glitch I like I like the work uh, I can imagine people thinking their uh, TV system or uh, laptop is broken again <laughs> so then we use the Flemish wave by hitting it on the head <laughs> uh, your mind works like a, a dia machine from of landscapes a big <laughs> um, um, yeah I, I thought it was funny the, the, the you work with the, the lamelles the blinders but something used to hide landscapes to give it a I think it's uh, poetic also uh, yeah for some reason I'm sorry uh, the, the the song of Eddie Wally I spell accordion uh, is that Eddie Wally? No, I don't even know uh, I like your um, dissection of the, the paintings it reminds me of uh, the way that old uh, animation movies were um, animated for uh, for example the backgrounds were also to create depth they, were, they had this big machine. Maybe you know it. it was this Disney has has it. Of course you know it. Okay, <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, this is the round image because your eye is round. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Vida.